at my sermon scripture this morning and it will be coming from Mark chapter 10 verses 35 through 45. We all feel special sometimes. We all have a desire to be first, the best, and the one. But what are we willing to give up to have this place in life? We want to be held higher than the next person. We want, so we work the hard, we work hard to be the best, excuse me. Then we present ourselves before the one whom we believe can bestow, 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 excuse me, the honor of first on us. We go to our bosses, we take our children to their teachers, we even stand at the altar before our pastors demanding that they say that we are the best worker, you have the best children, or, you, or even you are the best Christian. Never do we stand before God and ask what is God's will. We never acknowledge that God as our creator is the only one who can say to us, well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Let us pray. Lord, teach me what you want to me to teach. Or maybe I should say this another way. Lord, preach to me in order to preach through me. So, Lord, please don't let me preach a truth that I am not willing to live, or at least not seeking to live. In your name, in the name of the Son, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. My title for this scripture is, for this sermon is Sacrifice, Service, and Salvation. Jesus is our redemption. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read um, Matthew again um, because I want us to hear this. I want us to understand this. Um, I have the privilege of following Bishop Redfern's 8 o'clock service, and he preached on this text also. Um, so that makes me a little weary and shaky, but I'm good because I know that what he preached gave me the faith and the strength to preach what I need to preach this morning. But he spent his time talking about the congregation as a whole, the world as a whole, and our country as a whole. So I want us to take this down to the minute level, and I want us to look inside ourselves this morning. So I want us to take this, take this time this morning to see ourselves in this scripture. So I'm going to read it again. Matthew chapter 10, 35 through 45. Then, I'm Excuse me, Mark. I'm, I got a great, I got a great congregation. They're keeping me on my toes this morning. Thank you. Then James and John, the son of Zebedee, Zebedee, came to him saying, "Teacher, we want you to do for us what we ask." I'm gonna say that again. Teacher, we want you to do for us what we ask. And he said to them, "What do you want me to do for you?" And they said to him, grant us that we may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left hand in your glory. Now, that's in Jesus' glory. In Jesus' glory. Now, they just demanded to, to, to share his glory. So think about that. Now, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about how you, you behave in life. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said to him, we are able. So Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink 
the cup that I drink and with the baptism that baptism I am baptized with you will be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared. See, sometimes we want something that don't belong to us. And when the ten heard it, they began to get, be greatly displeased with James and John. Because all ten of us can't sit on the right hand <laughs> the left hand. And, but Jesus called them to himself and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them. Y'all know who we're talking about. That supervisor. And their, great one, and their great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. That's kind of backwards, ain't it? Think about it. That sounds kind of backwards. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. You want to be first? Want to be a slave? Want to jump in that line first? For even the Son of Man did not come to serve, be served, but serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. A ransom for many. Put a pen in that. A ransom for many. Okay. Now, being in charge of your own destiny is a human goal that is so far away from God's design and plan. But we seem to be running in that direction all the time. After all, we know that trying to be God, trying to have authority, is what caused, the man, caused man to fall. Genesis 3 tells us that. Man tries to usurp God's authority. And, and in doing so, he broke his relationship with God and fractured the universe forever. Our need to be validated by others and our need to control others is not of God. We must resist that need to be first. So what does it mean to be first? If you're the firstborn child, you might understand how heavy this burden is. You th think about it. You start out being held as the prize. The hope and glory of a magnificent union of your parents. But as the baby grows, it becomes the trial and error of the family's raising, the child rearing plan. As the firstborn, the child is sacrificed to the parent's ignorance of child rearing. When you are first, you are often asked to be the role model for the others. How you behave will determine how others will behave. You are the sacrifice. But what about sacrifice? What would you sacrifice to be first? I, 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 what is sacrifice? In the beginning, God asked man to sacrifice. He asked man to bring to the altar the ram, the sheep, the goat. And why was that? Anybody know? Why? God wanted to see how faithful you were to him. God wanted, God wanted you to, to kneel down before his altar and atone. By, by giving the blood of, of the animal. Because by giving the blood of the animal, you were saying that you understood what it meant, the death, what the blood of those animals meant. It was saying that by their death, you were cleansed. By the death of that of the sheep, it cleansed your sin. And if you go back to Hebrews this morning, Hebrews is talking about high priests. 
and the job of high priest. And high priests were at how high, high priests were asked to atone for the sins of the whole, which is what Bishop was talking about this morning. You, as the high priest, were to to say, lay those sacrifices out to atone for the village or the tribe or the group. So, what what about sacrifice? And what would you sacrifice to be first? You sacrifice a lot of things. Think about first responders. When that house is on fire, would you be the first to run in there? Would you be the first to say, I, I will risk my life to save somebody else's life? Um, what about soldiers who are risking their life to protect a country? You have to understand what type of sacrifice you're asking for. Now, our desire to usurp God's will is no different from the disciples. I mean, everybody want to be everybody want to be with the man. Now, what they what they were seeing as they came to the to the Jerusalem, they were seeing Jesus in His glory, and because they understood the glory to mean that. They were going to overturn on a temple of government and, and put in place a new king. Well, everybody want to be on the king's team. Everybody, everybody want to be the, the, the cup bearer, the sword bearer, because then you could walk around and say, I'm with the king. I'm with the dude, man. I'm with him. So when they were saying that, what's different about what we do? When we say, um, yeah, I'm with the bishop. I'm his number one man. Or what's different when we go to our job and say, yeah, I'm the, I'm, I'm the supervisor. Me and the supervisor eat lunch together every day. You, 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 you want to suck off that power. You want to live off that power, but you don't understand what it took to get that power. And this is where Jesus is talking to the disciples. So we take, we are no different from the disciples. When we say we want to take up the cross and follow Christ, but do we really want a shortcut to glory? If, if I'm walking with him, I don't have to do none of the stuff y'all got to do because I'm with him. I, 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 don't, I, don't need, I don't need to pray 10 times a day or I don't need to talk to God. I'm with him. I'm with God. He picked me. He put me on his side. We even want to lead the way between the way to heaven right in front of Jesus himself. Because some of us being such good friends with Jesus, we know what Jesus wants. And if you think about it, when they, when they walked right up to Jesus and said, we want you. We want you to do this for us. Now I want you to think about that for a minute. The son of the man that created you, the son of the man that created you, you walk up to him and tell him what you want him to do for you. Think about that. When we come to church and come to this altar and we lay our burdens down and look up at God and say, fix that. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> What's wrong with us? That we don't have the good sense. We live in ignorant people. We don't have the good sense to have humility before the man that created us. Um, I know we like to, us older people like to tell the stories of our grandmama to our younger kids and we say, if you, if you said that in front of my mama, she'd slap you in the mouth. Well, think about that when you think about how you talk to God. Think about that when you request stuff of God. I'm surprised God don't look down sometimes and say, what have you done for me lately? Because you 
standing in front of the man that is your source, your creator, and telling him what you want. Now imagine your family, your father, your mother, your grandmother, a person that raised you, and you standing in front of them right before dinner time, right before she going to write that check for that uh, school trip or write you that check to put down on your car payment. And you say to that parent, this is what I want you to do for me. We, and, and, and you know what the sad part is? That's happening. That's happening in churches. That's happening at homes. And people don't understand what they're asking for. We want to be made the high priest. But we don't want to do the work of God. We decide our ministries and our missions without even a consultation with God. We don't even kneel down and pray. We have no idea what God has created us for and his will for us. Now, when the disciples approached Christ, they had no idea what they was asking for. They saw the opportunity to present themselves for the top job, the top status. Kings of Rome. We're going to top of Rome and we're kings of Israel. He's going to give us a nice um, cushy job. And we're going to lord over the other people and tell them that Jesus is our best friend. Yeah, that corner office. That's right, the corner office. We do this in our lives, too. We see something that appears to be great and desirable, then we grab for it. That manager has a new car. Ooh, she got a great hairstyle. She paying money for that. And she got that beautiful corner office that you just talked about. I want that. And we have no idea what she lost to gain that. In reality, she lost custody of her children and her husband because she was working all the time. She don't have no friends, and, no, and, and she ain't got time for her family, so nobody is, is with her. So she go home alone to uh, polish that new car and to fix her hair, because that's all she got left. Are you willing to make that same sacrifice so you can have that corner office? I, I, I mean, we do this every day. We sit there and we say, if I could just be with her, if I could just be like her. Jesus is asking them, are they willing to make the same sacrifice he's making? But desire, greed, and pride made us say yes without even asking what it was. They said, he said, are you willing to drink from my cup? Now my cup, my cup is being thrown in the jail, <laughs> um, being beaten being hung on a cross, and they said, yes, put me in, count me in. Can, can you, they were, they said yes, they was willing to make the same sacrifice. But did their heart truly mean it? Did their heart truly mean it? I mean, did they really mean they wanted to um, hang on that cross, they, um, take the place of one of them two thieves and hang on that cross? Because if, if we know our Bible story, we know they were nowhere to be found. Nowhere. They were absent. People are willing to take first place as long as they don't have to sacrifice anything. We are willing to step on others. We are willing to crush desires. We are willing to kill, steal, and murder to be first. But we don't, and we don't care what happens as long as we're first. So Jesus is saying to be a true Christian, people, to be a true Christian and a true follower of Christ, you got to pick up a cross. And you might have, and sometimes you might have to hang from it. So that's your sacrifice. That's what you're willing to sacrifice your life. Are you willing to sacrifice your life for Christ? 
And that's what it comes down to. Every day for every Christian. Are you willing to sacrifice your life for Christ? Now then, because you know you can't have no, you can't have no brothers and sisters that going to think you got something that they didn't get, even though it might be a butt whipping, but they won't want it. They, don't, they just heard the back end of the story. They heard the back. So here come the 10 running and saying, we can't believe they tried to, tried to um, get in front of us. I was here first. I was the first, I was the first disciple you had. And now you're going to let them be right and left? So then Jesus had explained, some, do some explaining. Not mansplaining, but God's explaining. Explaining to them that, no, being first don't mean you get the prize. Being first means you serve the one who gets the prize. Think about that. Now think, think hard. You are first. You are the chosen. You are the anointed. But what's your job? To take that prize that God has put in your platter and give it to somebody else. To serve it to somebody else. So when God gives you a blessing, your blessing is you don't have a blessing because your blessing is up there in heaven. You just have a job to do. And your job is to serve that blessing to somebody else. You can't be a Christian and not be serving somebody. And your first service is to do God's will. Your first service is to God. Your first service is to God. Do I say that again? Did anybody get that? All right. Sometimes we don't know what we're asking for. We just want glory. But glory comes in our service to God. The, the thinking of just desiring glory without service is what caused the fall. I want to be like God. So how can I climb over and be like God? God has created us and given us gifts by his good pleasure. These gifts are used for his works. They are to be used for his works. So when I get that million dollar lottery, it don't belong to me. If God gave it to me, it don't belong to me. He just bestowed it on me as the custodian to do his will. When I get that big brand new BMW, when I say to God be the glory because God gave it to me, God didn't give that BMW to me. God gave that BMW to me to go serve his will. Amen. And as soon as we start understanding and, un and, and believing and knowing that we are nothing except through, for what God gives us, we're going to have a hard time getting through that eye of the needle. The eye of the needle. How, 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 how easy is it for a man to get into heaven? The same as it is for the, uh, a camel to get through the eye of the needle. So, so, so we can't get through the eye of the needle unless we serve in God. The, so we were created to serve God. Our blessings are, you, are to be used to serve others. They're not for our own selfish desires. They're not for us to build up wealth and sit in five houses and drive past homeless people. I'm to, for the life of me, I don't understand what you do with five houses. You can't live in all of them. Everything is given for a specific use in God's kingdom. Jesus tells us to serve God in all things, and God will re re reward us by his good pleasure. If we are first, we must be the ones to give those who have not. We must be willing to give up our spot. Christ was the firstborn, but his job was to take care of us. 
When we serve, we must serve through truth and light. We must give care to those who God has given us to care for. How often do we get caught up in our own presence that we forget about the others around us? We go, we go to an event to serve because we are supposed to serve others, but we're there serving the dignitary, the, the, the big guy, the special guy. And we never talk to that little old lady sitting in that corner that's not talking to anybody. We never speak to them. We never acknowledge them. But that, that was Jesus. That's when Jesus says, when I was, where were you when I was? We get so caught up in how important we are in relation to how important others are that we forget that everybody is important. In the kingdom, there is no, there is no first. There's only, there's only those to which we are serving. And if we're not serving, then we're not doing God's will. We, when I, li I, I think about the story of Mary and Martha and they were serving Jesus and one was in the kitchen just cooking and cooking and cooking and preparing the meal and she was mad because Mary was entertaining. And I always say I'm, I'm the one in the kitchen and I, and I kind of despise that one that's entertaining. But at the same time, when we're in the when we are so caught up in in doing that we miss the moment when we can be serving then we don't lost the moment so we have to be careful we have to be careful to balance the service and the entertaining cuz some people are so busy serving the uh, entertaining the guests that they forget about the little people and then some people are so busy serving the little people that's doing the little small task that could be done later that they forget that they should be they should be entertaining the mass. So so it's 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 a, it's a two-edged sword like truth. You we have to learn to balance that. When Jesus says, "I came to serve, not to be served," he is telling us that our redemption and salvation is tied to the way we first serve God and then our fellow man. How you serve God will determine, determine your redemption and your salvation. When I was reading, the, when we, we read this passage and learn that the disciples could only think of themselves. They had no idea of what Christ was getting, trying to get them to see. Sometimes we see what we want to see and never see what is meant to, we are meant to be, what we are meant to be doing. But if we could see our true purpose, we would be free and would be would find our peace. Jesus is continually encouraging us to find our true purpose that we may find redemption through him. How do we do this in our everyday lives? We are always seeking to place ourselves, when we are always seeking to place ourselves on top of others. No one wants to be, do the dirty work because they see no glory in it. They see the big task that gives the biggest earthly reward. Jesus is telling us that the heavenly reward is in the little things the little people, and the small task. How can you be expected to handle the big things when you have no regard for the small thing? My grandmother used to tell me, when you do work, she said, as a worker, you always do your best. She would say, even if you were a slave, when you work, you're not working for the master, the earthly master, you're working for the heavenly master. So in all things, do it to your best ability. So she would say, 
even if you are cleaning toilets, make sure those are the cleanest toilets on earth. Because you're not working for the master, you're working for the master. And when you work for the master, you do everything to the best of your, the talents that he has given you. Jesus, therefore, declares that God, through Jesus' death, will free people from oppression and captivity in, to, in captivity to other Another power, uh, excuse me, another power. You don't want to be captivated by people. And res restoring them to membership in the community that corresponds to God's reign. And the other power could be the devil. It could be other humans. So you, so you know what I'm saying. Jesus is there to return order. To follow Jesus, you must be willing to follow God's will and plan. We must be willing to give up our desires, those same desires that caused the fall, in order to be welcomed into the new kingdom. Jesus is the model that tells us those things required to become a member in God's kingdom. And he's saying they're not impossible to obtain. A lot of times we say, ain't nobody perfect but Jesus. But if you're following Jesus, you're on a really good start, good start to being perfect. We must have faith in our belief that God is our source. We cannot resort to self-help. We must depend completely on God, just as we depend on our parents as children. What do we ask our parents for? We ask them for security food, safety. So the same way we as children depended that, knew that when we came home, food would be on our table, we have to depend on God the same way. Salvation is ours if we take up the cross and follow Jesus. We must understand, just as the fireman understands, that our lives are committed to service. When we serve God, nothing else matters. We go where he sends us and we speak his truth, no matter the danger. We are not our own, but instruments of God's grace and mercy. We are not first, but last. We're not first, but last. Our salvation is tied to our service to the creator. We will one day see the face of our God. And he will say to us, well done, my good and faithful son. No, he's not going to say, well done, my uh, son, the prince. He's not going to say, well done, my, 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 my son, the heir to the, to the kingdom. Because, see, we get that twisted sometimes. We start saying, well, if Jesus is our brother and Jesus is the prince of God, Jesus is our brother, but he said he's a servant to God. So we are servants to God. We are meant to serve, and by, and by being good servants, we will be rewarded by the pleasure of the Father. Today is your opportunity to be welcomed into the kingdom of the Father through the salvation that was given to us by Jesus Christ. Jesus paid a ransom. Jesus paid the price so you could enter. All you have to do is follow. Take up the cross and follow. I say to you today, will you come? Will you come to the altar of God and follow Christ? If there be none, let us pray. Mm -hmm.